G'day, I'm Tegan and thank you so much for watching my channel. In my last few videos, I've reviewed properties for sale ranging from one euro all the way through to 500,000 euros. Then I narrowed it down to three favorite properties and then shared with you the excitement of actually making an offer on the one. But now I'm sorry to say what happened next was absolutely devastating news. We got told you can't buy your dream house in Italy. And in this video, I'm going to share with you everything that went wrong so that you don't make the same mistakes or have these things happen to you. Now, if you're wondering if you can buy a house in Italy and live the La Dolce Vita lifestyle, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you don't miss out on any of the videos in this series. G'day, g'day. My name's Tegan and I'm buying a house in Italy that I've never actually seen in a place I've never been to by somebody I've never even met with a room that doesn't seem to exist. Click subscribe to follow my journey. So in my last video, I shared the process of actually making an offer on a property in Italy. But one thing I didn't share was being told that we actually couldn't. Yes, you heard that right. The house was originally going to be in my husband's name and in between making the offer and all the excitement, we received a call from our property finder telling us that New Zealanders cannot buy a house in Italy. What the? For those that don't know, my beloved is a born and bred New Zealander or as we call them, Kiwis. He moved to Australia a couple of years before we met, but was still a New Zealand citizen. Now back to buying a house in Italy. Now, it turns out that New Zealand and Italy don't actually have a reciprocal agreement, which means they can't buy a house in Italy and Italians can't buy a house in New Zealand either. So after some quick paperwork changes, a new CODIS Viscali for me, a new offer contract with my autograph on it instead, our amazing property finder had us back on track and the offer was made for the purchase of the Churchview house in Galatina. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you may be thinking my channel is actually sponsored by Davide Mengele and his company, Salento with Love, but that's not true. I actually don't receive any form of compensation. I just know that without his and his team's expertise, I wouldn't have been able to purchase anything in Italy. And you're about to find out why it's so worth having someone like him on your team. For example, after making our offer and while we were waiting for the acceptance, at one point, Davide happened to drop in to see the owners, as he does. He's just like that. And he discovered that they hadn't actually been presented with our offer by the agent yet. Some swift action by Davide, and by that afternoon, it had all been sorted, and our offer got accepted the next day. Something else that came up throughout this process that would prove to be an issue was a room that didn't exist on the plans. It's the one you can see from the front underneath the balcony. This room is separate from the main house and you get to it via the little walkway off to the right of the stairs. It's a gorgeous little self-contained apartment, which I'd already assigned a name to be my mother's when she visited. It's got its own bathroom, church views and barrel ceiling, but it didn't exist on any of the titles, plans, paperwork or anywhere. And after consulting with the owners, it was discovered that the mother's room, as I'll call it, was part of a handshake agreement between their the owner's father and the previous owners, who no one seemed to be able to find. Now, this can happen in purchasing a house in Italy. That's why having plans and having someone to help you is so important. Now, before making an offer, we were assured it wouldn't be a problem, as it was just a matter of finding the previous owners and sorting it out. Hmm, famous last words. But now at least it was in both parties' interest to make that happen as the deposit had already been paid. So if it fell through, we would get our deposit back times two. So basically we were all invested in finding these people. Now months went by and everyone was doing everything that they could to get the paperwork sorted, but it just wasn't happening. Again, I thought our dream was about to dissolve. The problem was they were having difficulty locating the previous owners as they'd actually passed away. And so it was then a matter of finding their family members. It was like a needle in a haystack as they were somewhere in Rome. I was devastated by this stage. My patience had all run out. In fact, I honestly didn't think it was going to happen, but I didn't want to give up hope. After all, this was my dream. Then Davide and Salento with love came to the rescue again. I honestly don't know how he did it, 
But through his persistence, his connections and his incredible people skills, we finally had plans in front of us for the room and we were able to proceed with buying our house in Italy. The next step was to organize a power of attorney or POA. This is what's needed to purchase a property in Italy completely remotely. Davide and his team sent through the paperwork and the day we got it, I was actually in Queensland, which is our legal place of residence, but only for a short break. It was a Thursday and I was leaving on the Sunday and wouldn't be back again for over a year. What I didn't realize was that the POA or power of attorney had to be notarized in front of an Australian notary public, which is basically a senior lawyer with more qualifications. And it had to be certified by the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, or DFAT for short. And they provide an apostille to authenticate the actual document. And this is what's required for overseas documents. So an apostille is actually a certificate issued by a designated authority, in this case DFAT, and it has to be done in the place you're currently living, which I was about to leave in three days' time. The other thing I didn't realize, which was the kicker, is that to do the DFAT apostille, it requires an appointment, and there were no appointments for two weeks. It even states on the website that you can't just walk in. OMG, was it really going to come down to this last thing? I couldn't believe it. Now, I don't know if it was the emotional roller coaster that I'd been on to get to that point or what it was, but there was no way I was going to let this beat me. I got super determined. So as I drove between doctor's appointments that Thursday, I managed to find a lawyer to notarize the power of attorney, which took in the whole of like three minutes and cost $295. But hey, I was just glad that he could do it at such short notice. It was literally within an hour. Then the next day, I got up super early and drove to Brisbane City and went into the DFAT office. Of course, I was told I had to have an appointment by the lovely security lady. I politely explained my predicament and requested if someone didn't show for their appointment, could I possibly take their place? She rolled her eyes and let me go through. I waited and waited and waited for hours. At times the place was actually empty, but the gatekeeper lady was adamant she wasn't going to let me in without an appointment. Eventually around lunchtime, she folded and it was all done within 10 minutes. I walked out feeling triumphant and hugely grateful. Now the cost of the apostille was $174, but that was because I got two of them done while I was there, just in case something happened to the first one. I didn't want to risk anything else going wrong. I then drove back to the Sunshine Coast and went straight to the postal office to FedEx the Apostle to Italy. I got there just as they were closing early for a family event and they weren't actually going to be open the next day. The cost $150.75, but I felt super lucky to have made it. I went home, promptly poured a large vino and put up my feet. <laughs> Now it was over to Davide and the wonderful team at Salento with Love to complete the sale on my behalf of my 14th century house <laughs> that will become my, oh my God, I'm tearing up. <laughs> oh. That was ridiculous. <laughs> that will become my Italian home. <sighs> In my next video, I'll be traveling to Italy to see my house for the very first time. Hopefully it exists. Oh my God. <laughs> now, if, now, if you have any questions about any of the processes, please ask me in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure that you do that now so you don't miss out on the rest of this crazy adventure. Thanks again for watching, subscribing, and all your lovely comments and questions. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now. And they provide what's called an apostille to a thought... Blah. And they provide an apostle to a thought. Oh, I can't say it. <laughs> In my next video, I'll be traveling to Italy to see my house for the first time. <laughs> Hopefully it exists. What is wrong with me? Oh, my God. <sighs>